new chapter of the channel has begun and I need to write myself an intro. I want to take that and make it into a 15 second intro and if I like what I've done, eventually I'm going to make it into a song. I'm not looking to come up with something that's really complex and shows off my skill. I just want to create something that's interesting and fun. With that being the case, we'll just use the guitar, the drums, the piano and some bass. So what I have so far is an E minor chord where I'm raking all the strings to the low E and then sliding on the bottom three strings to make an E minor chord. One thing that I thought that I really want to do in this intro song is take a minor chord from the scale and turn it into a major chord. Another song that I'm currently writing has this progression. E minor, D major, C major, and then B major. That's important because in the key, the B is actually a minor. That's what it should be, but I've turned it into a major, so it's got a little bit more of a different feel. So because we're in the same key, E minor, I'm just going to use the same chords. The B minor becomes a B major just because I know that it already works. Now what we have is a beginning and an end to the riff because if we go straight from the E minor to the B major, it feels not wrong, but just not what I want. So now I'm gonna work out another chord that I can use in the middle that very easily falls down from the E onto that chord and then falls down again to the B major. Now, because I want it to fall, the two chords that I can mainly work with because I'm, I know music theory is D major and C major because from B, to get back up to that E, you've got B major, B minor technically, but B major, C major, D major, and then you've got your octave E minor. Out of those two, I wanna use the chord that has the closest notes to the other two chords. So the E minor chord has got E, G, and B. The C major has got C, E, and G. Which is very, very close, because it means we can take the E, and the G from the other chord. And we can move this B that's here up a semitone to the C. So the only change is a semitone jump from the B to C. The C major also works really well because it's just a half step or semitone move down. So now if we put that all together, we have this. It's been about five minutes and I've come up with this lick. It's very, very simple, but I think it works really well. The important thing to note is that I've, I've raised the seventh to make it a major seven, which is the D becomes a D sharp, which gives a nice resolution up to that E. Now that we have the guitar done, I want to look at the piano. So the chords we're using is E minor, C major, and then the B major. C major to the B major, normal 1-3-5 triad works really well, so I'm just going to keep it as that. But for the E minor, I want to do an inversion, so instead of playing the B up here, I'm going to move it down here. And the reason for this is because I want there to be a little lift from the minor chord to the major chords. I'm using this different sound to really demonstrate this as well as I can. So if we take this E minor chord, make it an inversion. It sounds very minor and it sounds really good. And all we need to do to make this E minor a C major is like I said before, move the semi the B, move the B up a semitone from B to C. And this is what it sounds like. It's a really big lift and I feel like that would sound a lot nicer than just going down like that because we're already doing that with the guitar. One thing that I love in music is a really good bass line because what we're playing isn't too difficult. We can play something that's not too complex and it will sound really good with the rest of the instruments. So I'm thinking for the E minor chord, we do something simple. 
by just having octaves and then the fifth. Which is that E notes to the B. And because the B is the seventh of the C, there's a little bit of tension which is released when you move up to the C note. That slight little bit of tension gives this bass line a little bit more of an interesting feel. Here we have the piano, bass and guitar all recorded. The reason that I just recorded those three is so that I could have something to listen to while I was trying to come up with the drum beat. After the drums are done, I'm going to re-record the three instruments so that they're all in time with each other. After listening to it a couple of times, I think I've worked out what I want with the drums. It's yet again, nothing too fancy, but we lead in with the crash. Something very simple like that, the kick drum sort of follows the guitar. And I want to add some flam and fill stuff, but as you just heard there, every time I the drum, the rim shots all activate. I'll sit in the middle of that pad the whole time. The drum track has now been recorded, everything else has been redone and it is all in time. Before I show you the final product, I wanted to quickly explain how I've recorded everything. The audio interface that I've been using is the Scarlett Focusrite Solo and to record my amplifier I've been using the Shure SM57 microphone. And for the piano and the drums I used just a guitar lead to connect to the audio interface which ran through Pro Tools first which came free with the focus right and just for the sake of it i'll give you a quick little rundown of how pro tools works so to add a track you just need to come up here to the top where it says track over by file edit view track clip event etc click track click new you can also just do Control shift n now you really don't have to mess with any of these at all you can just click create and down here at the bottom you can see that the new track has been added the first step is you need to check which input you're using on your audio interface over here on the right you're going to click the left selector and you should have interface down here make sure that you've got either input one or input two on the focus right scarlet solo the input one is the microphone and the input two is the instrument so depending on which one you're using make sure you selected the corresponding one and after you've set that up you just need to click this record button over here it should start flashing then you click the one up the top here where you've got your stop your start play and then your record press that Press play and it should all start recording. But with that done, I think it's time to show you what we've got. So that went all right, I'm pretty happy with it. I've now got an intro for all my videos on YouTube. Just as the song itself, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm thinking I'm going to make it maybe a three, three and a half minute long song and actually put some effort into it. But from an intro standpoint, it is done. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.